Welcome to Believers Mandate. Please like our videos, share and subscribe. Thank you and God bless you. Encounter with Jesus is the doorway to power. A man who has no encounter with the Lord will end up speaking English language and he will speak it for a long time. The indicator and the alarm system that will reveal to you how helpless you are are the circumstances of life. Every time a man is to be revealed to himself, every time the weakness and the helplessness of a man is to be revealed, the alarm that makes that happen are the circumstances of life. And at the same time, the ingredients for announcing a man are still the circumstances of life. So the platform for manifestation in this realm is not the pulpit. They are the circumstances of life. Crisis is the platform for manifestation. But the question is, what type of manifestation will men see? Is it defeat or triumph? The key is power. Every time a man is to step into another pedestal, a crisis confronts him. The doorway into that realm is the power that he can command. But if there is no power, then you now see how helpless you are. Let me tell you something. The things the devil... <laughs> the things the devil throw at us are actually opportunities for us to manifest power. But when you see a thousand and one Christians running and looking for help, it's a testimony of the depravity of power that is found among the Christian civilization. The day power comes, everything, the devil himself will advise himself to stop. The Bible said in Acts chapter 5 verse 15 that they put they that were maimed and sick by the roadside, that by all means, as Peter comes out of the place of prayer, that is shadow. He shadow. There's no way you would have known that shadows heal the sick except as a man carried power. Every time power is present, crisis of life becomes an avenue for manifestation. The reason why the crisis of life brings men down is because of a lack of power. So if you want to bring a cure to the crisis of life, your pursuit should be an encounter with Jesus. He said in John chapter 1 from verse 11, he came unto his own and his own, they knew him not. He came to the world, although the world was made by him, but the world received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the power, the right, the authority to become the sons of God. And he didn't use the word sons because he didn't have many words to use. He used the word sons because in kingdom context, only sons advance government. A child of God have access to plenty and abundance. But government is not for children. Government is for sons. Government is for grown-up. That's why in Galatians 4.1, it said the heir, so long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So he places him under tutors and governors. There are two things you need to know. When you have the life of God, you are the child of God. But when you begin to encounter God, you transform to become the son of God. That's a man who can handle power. Sonship is not based on birth. Sonship is based on encounter. He said, we all with open faces, beholding as in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed into that image from glory to glory. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, he said, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Many have no encounter with the Lord. That's why they are helpless. Are they the children of God? Yes. But how many times have they beheld him? How many times have they encountered him? This is not religion. This is why people are psyched. They think this thing is just a child's play. You shout and it's done. And they go to relax. When crisis comes, it reveals to them that they are still babes. Power is a function of encounter. If you have no encounter with the Lord, you have no power. Because the more you see him, the more you become like him. That's what made Adam to rule in the garden. The Bible said in Genesis 3 verse 8, it said in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking came walking and the more Adam saw that voice the more Adam ruled from that realm the things Adam did you can't imagine it that's the first Adam what he did was unimaginable it was Adam that when Adam was literally functioning as a god on the face of the earth it was the fall of Adam that necessitated Romans chapter 8 verse 19 he said the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God because when creation looked at Adam what they saw was glory 
When he said, let us make him in our own image and like the, the word nature is the word glory. So Adam was an emitter of the glory of God. So when the birds look at him, they see God. When trees, if Adam passes close to a tree, he increases the lifespan of that tree. The mosquitoes came to Adam to sing songs of worship because of what he carried. Adam could sit in Eden and command the galaxies and the constellation. Every manifestation you see before the coming of Jesus Christ were packets of things Adam did. He was Adam that brought that witness to the face of the earth. If Joshua could tell the sun to stand, it's because it was captured in Adam's record. Because it was Adam that created that allowance to the face of the earth. If men could name things, it was because Adam named them. If Adam had not revealed the possibility of giving nomenclature to things that God created, you wouldn't have dared to it. Adam was the patriarch that ordered the first order of manifestation on the face of the earth. But the reason was because in the cool of the day, he kept looking at him. He kept looking at him. And the more he saw him, the more he became like him. The key of power is encounter. This is why we stay long in a place of prayer. It's not because we want to brag that we pray for 10 hours. If it was about time, it would have been a waste. If it was about time, it would have been a waste. We pray into encounters. We don't pray because we want to pray long. We pray long because there are gates in the heavens. And as we join in prayer, we are sent. That's why he said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not? Neither is he weary. He giveth power to the faint. And unto them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. They run, they are not weary. They walk, they do not faint. What has happened? They have begun to see something that is not within human civilization. Once upon a time, the guy could faint. But when he began to mount up, he started seeing something else. He started seeing something else. And the Bible said Jesus was weak and he went to Gethsemane. And there he knelt down in fear and he was praying. And suddenly he said, Angels came and strengthened him. He said in John, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, he said, As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment glistered. And there stood, they appeared before him Moses and Elias. When we begin to ascend, we begin to see heavenly realities and when you see it you come out with him because when we shall see him we shall be like him if you have not had encounter you have no power my brothers and sisters don't use your life for experiment instead of confronting the mountain labor in the spirit to have encounter don't begin from the mountain because a motivational preacher told you things don't begin there don't begin there this is not psychology you cannot labor in the spirit to catch a glimpse of reality but you want to go and labor with the mountain that's why our labor is in futility a man who cannot stay with god until he touches him wants to go and command the mountain to move so instead of spending time with god and commanding things on earth you don't spend time with god and you come to earth and things command you